In this lesson, we will explore how calculus applies to the concept in physics of work. So first, we need to give the technical meaning of work that is used in physics. What are the units of work in the metric system and the U.S. customary system? So the general definition in this is this. So if an object is moved a distance d, so if a object is moved an object, a distance d, in the direction of a constant force, F, then work, which we will call capital W, is equal to force time dist times distance. Now you can think of force as the push or pull on an object. Now in the metric system, force is most commonly given by meters times acceleration. So if we have S of t being a position function, that would be times d squared s over dt squared. Often he will use acceleration due to gravity for this, so we would use 9.8 meters per second squared. And in this case, your work will equal your force times distance, or your meters times your acceleration, multiplied by your distance. And work is measured in joules, and the units of force are newtons. Now, the US customary system is actually easier. In this case, this is commonly misunderstood, but pounds is actually a unit of force. So in the US customary system, your force is in pounds. And in this case, if my work is my force times my distance, and say my distance is measured in feet, I would have the units of this are foot-pounds. If your distance was measured in yards, it'd be yard-pounds. Miles, we'd have mile-pounds. Let's consider the work that is done in the following scenarios. So suppose you lift a 2 kilogram book off the ground and put it on a deck that is 2.5 meters high. Use the acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared. So we have that our work is equal to force times distance. The first thing we need to do is find the force. So the force in this case is equal to the mass times the gravitational acceleration due to gravity. So that will equal 2 times 9.8. This is equal to 19.6. Now force is measured in newtons. Now the work is equal to this force times the distance, so 19.6 multiplied by 2.5, which is 49 joules. In both of the previous examples, the force was constant. Now, suppose instead we have a variable force, f of x, that acts on an object. You assume that f is continuous. We want to compute the work done by f of x as x varies between a and b. So you start by taking your interval from a to b, and as we do with many calculus problems, divide it up into little pieces of width delta x equal to b minus a over n. So there's my division, and I have some force function. Now choose a sample point. We'll call it x sub i star. That's in the interval from x sub i minus 1 to x sub i. 
and then the force at that point is given by plugging that number into your force function. And the work at that point, or the work over that interval, is about equal to the force, which is f of x sub i star, times the distance, which is delta x. And so my total work is about equal to a sum from i equals 1 to n of all these, all the work over the individual subintervals. And to find the work exactly, you take a limit as n goes to infinity of this expression, and that gives you, by definition, the integral from a to b of f of x dx. When a particle is located a distance of x feet from the origin, a force of f of x equals x squared plus 5x pounds acts on it. How much work is done in moving it from x equals 0 to x equals 2? So what this is saying, say when you plug in x equals 0, the force is 0. At x equals 1, the force would be 6. At x equals 2, the force will be 14. So the force is increasing as the x's get larger. The total work done will be given by the integral from a to b of the force function, f of x dx, we have the integral from 0 to 2, x squared plus 5x dx, so that's x squared, x cubed over 3, plus 5 over 2 x squared, evaluated from 0 to 2. Now this is 8 thirds plus 5 halves times 4. Now 5 halves times 4 is 10, which is 30 thirds. So 8 over 3 plus 30 over 3 will equal 38 over 3. And the units here, because f of x was measured in pounds and x was measured in feet, the units here are foot-pounds. A common example of force is one involving springs. And when we talk about springs, we are going to use a law called Hooke's Law. And Hooke's Law states that the force required to maintain a spring stretched x units beyond its natural resting length is proportional to x, meaning that f of x equals kx, where k is a positive constant and x is not too large. And what this means is suppose you have something like a slinky, which is a spring, and the initial stretching is not very hard, but when you stretch it further, it gets harder and harder and harder to stretch it. And the fact that kx is not too large just means that you can't sort of overextend your spring. So let's see how that applies to a particular example. A force of 12 pounds is required to hold a spring stretched 3 inches beyond its natural length. How much work is done in stretching it from its natural length to 6 inches beyond its natural length? So I'm going to start by converting my units into feet. So 3 inches is equal to 3 over 12 feet, which is 0.25 feet. And 6 inches is equal to half a foot, so 0.5 feet. Now we have the function f of x equals kx by Hooke's Law. We know that the force required is, a force of 12 pounds is required to hold a spring that's 3 inches beyond its natural length. So when x is 0.25 feet, so f of 0.25 is equal to k times 0.25. And we know that that is equal to 12. So 12 is equal to k times 0.25. And we find that k is equal to 48. So my force function is f of x equals 48x. Now I want to compute how much work is done in stretching the spring from its natural length, which corresponds to x equals 0, to 6 inches beyond its natural length, which if we're doing this in feet, corresponds to x equals 1 half. So the total work is given by the integral from 0 to 0.5, 
of 48x dx. And this will give us 24x squared evaluated from 0 to 0 0.5. That is 24 times 1 half squared, or 24 times 1 quarter, which is 6. Now, because of the way that I chose the units, this is 6 foot-pounds. When inputting your answer to WebAssign, be aware that they may have chosen a label for you. So if you were to leave this in inch-pounds, you multiply that by 12 and we get 72 inch-pounds. If you had chosen to not do the conversion back in the beginning here, you would have gotten this answer. Suppose that 4 joules of work is needed to stretch a spring from its natural length of 30 centimeters to a length of 40 centimeters. So the amount that this spring has been stretched is 10 centimeters, which is equal to 0.1 meters. Now we were told, now we have that the work is equal to the integral from a to b kx dx. And the reason I say kx is because we have a spring. Now we know that the work is 4 joules to stretch the spring 10 centimeters. So we have that 4 is equal to the integral from 0 to 0.1 of kx dx. We can use this to figure out what the force function is. So I anti-differentiate, and I have 4 equals 1 half kx squared, evaluated from 0 to 0.1. Now that multiplied by 1, multiplied by 2, and we will have 8 equals k times 0.1 squared, or 8 equals k times 0 0.1. Zero, 0.01. This gives us that k is equal to 800, and my force function f of x is equal to 800x. Now we can answer the question you were asked. How much work is needed to stretch the spring from 35 to 40 centimeters? Now 35 centimeters is 5 centimeters past the natural length, or 0 0.05 meters. And 40 centimeters is 10 centimeters past the length, natural length, so 10 centimeters once again is equal to 0.1 meters. The total work done to stretch that spring is given by the integral from 0 0.05 to 0 0.1 of 800x dx. Now that is 400x squared. which is equal to 3 joules. Now the interesting thing here is that stretching the spring the first 5 centimeters was just 1 joule of work, but the next 5 centimeters was 3 joules of work, which just illustrates that the work increases as you are stretching the spring farther from its natural resting position. How far Beyond its natural length, will a force of 300 newtons keep the spring stretched? So we have that the force function from the previous part of this problem is 800x. Now we know that this force is 300 newtons, so we'll have 300 equals 800x, and x is equal to 3 eighths. In this case, x is measured in meters. So a force of 300 newtons will keep the spring stretched 3 eighths of a meter beyond its natural length. Suppose we have a heavy chain that is 100 feet long, which weighs 3 pounds per foot, and it hangs over the edge of a building that is 250 feet high. How much work is done in pulling the chain to the top of the building? So we start this problem by dividing the interval from 0 to 100 up into n pieces of width delta x. And we're going to let x sub i star, oops, like before, be a point 
in the interval from x sub i minus 1 to x sub i. Now the work to move that little bit of chain up, called that w sub i, will equal the force times the distance. Now in this case, the force, since we're using the American system, we have the force will be measured in pounds. So the chain weighs three pounds per foot. So three pounds per feet. And the amount of chain you move is delta x feet, giving you a force of three delta x. Now the distance the chain moves is at this distance is x sub i star. And to find the total work, you add up all these individual approximations and take a limit as n goes to infinity. So it'll be 3 x sub i delta x. And by now you should recognize that this is going to give you an integral, in this case from 0 to 100 of 3x dx, which is 3 over 2x squared evaluated from 0 to 100, or 15,000 foot-pounds. Now next, so how you would you figure out how much work is done in pulling half of the chain to the top of a building? So in that case, your x sub i's will only go to 50. So the way to figure out how much work is done in pulling half of the chain up, we will simply integrate from 0 to 50, but the same function 3x dx applies. And that is once again 3 over 2x squared evaluated from 0 to 50, which is significantly less. It is 3,750 foot-pounds. And the reason that's the case is this chain that's left to be moved up would have to move more distance, resulting in more work. Suppose we have an aquarium that is 2 meters long, 1 meter wide, and 1 meter deep, and it's full of water. We want to find the work needed to pump all of the water out of the aquarium. The density of water is 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter. Now let's start by making an axis oriented downward, we'll call it the x-axis, and zero corresponds to the water level down to one meter. And I'm going to divide this interval from zero to one into n pieces of width delta x. And I will let x sub i be a sample point somewhere in the interval from zero to one. Now suppose we have a slice of water that's delta x thick. Now to find the work of moving that slice out of the tank, we're going to need to find the force times the distance. So let's start with the force. So the force is equal to the mass times the times acceleration due to gravity. So we'll have m sub i times 9.8. Now to find m sub i, we need to figure out the density of water times the volume. So density of water was given to us as 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter. The volume of that slice will be 1 times 1 times 2 times thickness delta x. So that, not quite right, but that's 2,000 delta x. So thus the force acting on an ith slice will be 2,000 delta x times 9.8 or 
19,600 delta x. And when you notice that the distance the slice has to move is actually x sub i, that tells you that the work for moving an ith slice is given by 19,600 delta x times x sub i. So the total work is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of the sum from i equals 1 to n of 19,600 x sub i delta x, which becomes the integral from 0 to 1. 19,600 x dx, which results in 9,800 joules. A tank has the shape of an inverted point-down circular cone with height 10 meters and a base radius of 5 meters. So I've drawn a triangle that represents a cross-section of this tank. The water extends from a depth of 1 meter to a depth of 10 meters. Find the work required to empty the tank by pumping all of the water to the top of the tank. Suppose we now have a tank that is the shape of an inverted circular cone with a height of 10 feet and a base radius of 5 feet. The water extends from a depth of 1 foot to a depth of 10 feet. Find the work required to empty the tank by pumping all the water to the top of the tank. So here is a picture of the cross section of our tank. Pretend that there is an axis, an x-axis going down where this corresponds to 0. The water level starts at 1 and the bottom of the tank is at 10. So let's divide this interval from 1 to 10 into n pieces of width delta x equal to 10 minus 1 over n. And we're going to let x sub i star be somewhere in the interval from x sub i minus 1 to x sub i. So in this picture that I've drawn, suppose that we're at this point x sub i star. Now to find the work, we need to compute the force times the distance. And let's start with the force. So we need to figure out what the force is acting on this ith slice. So the force will be given by the volume of the slice times the density of water. So V sub i is a little tricky to find, but the density of water is given to be 62.4 pounds per cubic foot. And the reason that this will work out, if you think about it, this volume will have units cubic feet, which will cancel out the other cubic feet, this is the denominator, giving you just pounds, which is an, a unit of force. So let's now figure out what the volume of an ith slice is. So we're going to use similar triangles to do this. So first let's let r sub i equal the radius of the ith slice. And let's zoom in a little bit on that picture. It will look like this. So here is that r sub i. There is 5. The total distance from top to bottom is 10. That point right there is x sub i star, which makes this side there 10 minus x sub i star. Then using similar triangles, we have that r sub i over 10 minus x sub i star is equal to 5 over 10. So this side over that side is equal to this side over that side. And just notice that 5 over 10 is 1 half. And solving for r sub i, we get that r sub i is equal to 1 half times 10 minus x sub i star. And now, since that slice is a circle, the volume of that is pi r sub i squared, or pi over 2 
times 10 minus x sub i star squared. This gives us the force on the ith slice as 15.6 pi times 10 minus x sub i squared. Now the work on the ith slice will equal the force on that slice multiplied by the distance. So we will have 15.6 pi 10 minus x sub i star squared. Oops, and I forgot a delta x because we need to multiply by the thickness of that slice. And now the distance that slice travels to the top of the tank is given by x sub i star. So that is the work on a single slice. To find the total work, we have to add them all up and take a limit as the number of slices goes to infinity. We just determined that the work on an ith slice, bringing it to the top of the tank, is given by this expression. So the total work is given by a limit as n goes to infinity of a sum of these expressions from i equals 1 to n, w sub i. And that will transform into an integral. So it would be 15.6 pi times the integral from 1 to 10, that's begin at 1, ends at 10, of 10 minus x squared multiplied by x dx. That's 15.6 pi integral 1 to 10. This will be 100x minus 20x squared plus x cubed dx. And now we anti-differentiate 15.6 pi times 50x squared minus 20 over 3x cubed plus 1 quarter x to the fourth from 1 to 10. And that ends up at 12,320.1 pi foot-pounds. For the next example, we will use a law called Boyle's Law that states that the pressure exerted by a given mass of an ideal gas is inversely proportional to its volume. Generally, the pressure of a gas tends to decrease as the volume of the space increases. This gives us the equation P equals K over V. Now to suggest how this relates to work, let's consider the following example. Suppose we have a piston of radius R that is filled with some gas, call this distance x. As the gas expands, the piston is going to move and some work is going to be done, and we want to figure out what that work is. Let's let P equal the pressure of the gas, measured in pounds per square foot, and let V equal the volume of the gas. Now, the work involved in moving the piston delta x feet, we'll call that delta w, for just a little bit of change in work, is given by your force times the distance. And for that force, in this case, we measured in pounds. So the way to make that feet squared cancel is to find the area. So we'll have the pressure times the area of a cross section times the distance, which is delta x. In this particular case, the area is pi r squared. So delta w is equal to p times pi r squared delta x. And as a group, that is actually the change in the volume. So we have the pressure times delta v. And the total work done is then done by taking a limit, adding these all up, and it gives us an integral from the initial pressure, initial volume to the expanded volume of P dV. And if you apply Boyle's Law, you can insert this for P. So V1, V0 to V1, K over V dV. 
So a quantity of gas with an initial volume of 2 cubic feet and a pressure of 500 pounds per square foot expands to a volume of 5 cubic feet. Find the work done by the gas. So we start with our equation, P is equal to K over V. So we know that the pressure is 500 pounds per square foot when the volume is 2 cubic feet. So that gives us 500 equals K over 2, where K is equal to 1,000. This gives us the equation P equals 1,000 over V. And using the results of the previous example, we have that the work done is given by an integral from 2 to 5 of 1,000 over V dV. So that is 1,000 ln absolute value V from 2 to 5, or 1,000 times ln 5 minus ln 2, which is about equal to 916.3 foot-pounds.